Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. Welcome to a new episode of Consider Islam. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you, brother. Josh Evans, how you doing? I'm good, very good. Alhamdulillah. All praise to the one true creator. How are you? Good, good. Alhamdulillah. Thank God. You won't find the people who are praising the creator more than those who call themselves Muslims. Absolutely. At good times, bad times, we're always saying, thank God, thank God. Absolutely. Uh, tell us, does uh, uh, Joshua Evans, Evans, does that have anything to do with Bob, Bob Evans? I, I don't think so. <laughs> You know, it's a good restaurant, though. <laughs> you heard of Bob Evans? Yeah. Great taste on the farm? Yeah, great taste on the farm. I don't know, maybe somewhere in the lineage. Jihad, holy war. You hear this all around the media, you know, Muslims, Sharia, and many people are even coming out, you know, openly saying, look, Islam is the problem. Islam is the problem. They're trying to take away our freedom. You know, these backwards Muslims are just trying to take away everything that we've developed and we're a developed nation, and these people are backward, and they're just trying to, you know, do things backwards. And they want to oppress the women and put them behind this, this veil. Uh, this is the topic that we're going to be talking about today. So yes. tell us, uh, ha have you also, you know, been kind of feeling this, that, these things that are out there? What are your thoughts it, on it? It's, it's, it's a very unfortunate fact that, you know, after a certain amount of things have been put forward, that this is what you should be afraid of from Islam and Muslims, that it's kind of boiling down now to where the real issues are coming out, that Islam is the problem, that the, the Quran is the problem, that the, the jihad is a problem, that the Sharia is a problem. The real issues and tenets of Islam are now being pointed out as the problem. But the only real problem with that is they're being distorted. Those teachings and parts and parcels of Islam are being distorted outside of their their realistic teachings to be put as an ideology that we should be afraid of. Uh, and this is the problem is that the information is being distorted so that when the masses get this information, it no longer looks like Islam. What they're calling Islam, after it is delivered to the people through the mass media, it has been churned up and twisted so much that the final product does not even look like Islam anymore. That's what we really need to deal with, whether it's Islam or whether it's not Islam. Very simple. Now you had just not too long ago, someone who've got, who, who had international media exposure and attention and someone who had like 20, what is it, 25 followers and then he got out there on the microphone and the media just, just you know, gave him all the attention. And this is the same way we can say that those who have some extreme views, there are minute, few and the media gives all them their attention. So you can see like, you know, you can use this and see how, like, when, and this doesn't, because you had Christian, I'm talking about this Jerry Barry Jones who was talking about yeah. burning the Quran, and you had Christians, Jews, other people who, from other religions who came up and said, hey, this guy, you know, he don't represent us. And he was talking about burning the Quran. What were your thoughts on this? Yeah, he actually talked about burning the Quran, didn't go ahead with it, and then finally did go ahead with putting the Quran on trial, and then they burnt one copy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Realistically, it just shows the profound ignorance not only of some people, but the profound ignorance of the media, you know, to, to even give a platform to this ideology and, and to this type of rhetoric. We have to ask, what is their intention? Because Terry Jones was some guy unknown in, 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 in a small area not too far from where I used to live in Florida that had a follower, following that you could find at any bus stop here in Chicago. You know, so it wasn't like he had some massive audience and then the media gave him this massive audience. It just shows that, that he was trying to put some attention on himself and put his attention on what he wanted to say Islam was about. Uh, but in reali reality, he did nothing wrong as far as in his uh, um, efforts to burn the Quran and things of that nature. None of that was wrong, but his intentions to make Islam look so violent were the thing that we were really concerned about. I heard one of our, our good friends, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, that he was saying, look, you know, we, we, can, we can give you some of the old, these, uh, the Quran is unchanged, untampered with, tamper-free, tamper-proof in the original Arabic, but you might have some, you know, some pages missing, you might have some misprints by human beings making human errors. I heard the Sheikh was saying, look, we'll send you some of these, you know, it'd be a pleasure you can burn these up. Yes, well, well, when we spoke to Terry Jones, yeah. you know, we kind of tried to take the air out of his argument very quickly. Yeah. Let him know that first and foremost, what you're doing is not impermissible in Islam. Uh, one of the permissible, well, the most recommended way to get rid of a Quran, whether it has become old or damaged or it's a misprint or whatever, is to burn it. Uh, and, and also, if you're trying to set a precedence, you're about 1400 years too late. Because the, the third caliph of Islam, Uthman, the third Khalifa, did this a long time ago when he codified and said these are the authorized versions of the Quran 
and everything else that is trying to be put out there, we're going to burn it and destroy it. So he did that. He burned a large number of Qur'ans so that there would be one codified way that the way the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him taught. So I told him, we told him, you're, you're far, far too late. You're not the first to do this, nor are you doing anything impermissible. We'll send you loads. If you want loads, we can call up all the masjids and the mosques in North America in the world and say, if you have some old Qur'ans you want to get rid of, send them to Terry Jones. Let mm -hmm. him burn them. He could have done it. It, it seemed like uh, people would be more upset the intention behind it. It was yes. just like trying to find mm -hmm. a way when, when you want to work towards peace with someone you'll find a common ground. You'll find a platform, a ground, a solid foundation that you can work towards this peace. But it seemed like he was just more about stirring up negativity, bashing Islam, this bigotry, mm -hmm. this hatred. It seemed like, okay, the Japanese at one time were the enemies, then the African Americans, and now the Muslims, you know? Now the Muslims, these are the opponents, these are the other. Yes. These are the others. Well, what he was trying to do and what a lot of people try to do, the media try to do, is build barriers. Because the, the truth is a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous tool. Uh, not dangerous in a negative sense, but dangerous in the fact that it, it, it enlightens people. It gives people a sense of new awareness. Uh, and, and if you don't want people to be exposed to a truth that, that may change the whole scheme of the system and enlighten people, then you build barriers. And this is what this attempted to do. Build barriers between the truth and between the people. And we really want to encourage people, get people excited to work towards peace, to work towards an understanding with your neighbor, with your Muslim neighbor at that. If he's Muslim, get to know him. Let him take you out to some biryani or a milkshake or what. Ask him these tough questions. Does And we're going to ask you one of those tough questions. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy, Barry, Jerry, uh, Terry Jones, whatever his name was, that he said that he wanted to put the Qur'an on trial. So if you have a Muslim neighbor, go and ask your Muslim neighbor, does this Qur'an call you to kill me as a Christian? Does it call you to kill me as a Jew? Does it call you to cause this havoc on earth? Does it? I'm asking you right now. Absolutely not. You know, the idea is put forward that the Qur'an is a book full of violence and the book full of tyranny and oppressive teachings, which if we go to what the Qur'an teaches, the, the, like I said, the information, the truth is readily available. The main com complex of the Qur'an, the main portion of the Qur'an is the teachings that God is one. This is the majority of the teachings of the Qur'an about God's oneness. The second largest majority of the Qur'an's teachings are about the day of judgment, the day which we will have to stand in front of our Creator and give account for our actions. And the third largest is the stories of the prophets, the stories of Noah, the stories of Moses, of David, of Abraham, of Jesus, all of them, peace be upon all of them. And then the smallest portion of the Qur'an is the teachings of rules and regulations, which are talking, we're going to talk about are the Sharia. And in that is a minute portions talking about the rules and regulations of war. And within those rules and regulations of war are things that do teach non uh, um, non-aggression towards innocent people. You cannot kill innocents, you cannot kill uh, women and children, and all of these things that we are going to put forward to the audience are in there. But the Quran is not a violent book. The, the, the truth is there for anyone to go pick it up. It's not some book that is hidden and only certain people can read it. No, you can go and get it and read it for yourself and make yeah. your own decisions. This is, we know, that's testified by one, over 1 1.5 billion people, that this is the verbatim word of God. It's one version of the Quran, is that right? One version. One version, and it's in the Arabic. God could have revealed it in French or in German, but he chose because this Arabic language that we can go on, it's another show. It doesn't call in that it's elevating the Arab now, does it? Or no. it's a religion for the Arab. This is a, a book that is for the whole of mankind, and it talks about these things. And I had one person, because so many people are coming to Islam, one person, he was new to Islam, and then he'll hear some of these things, and he came to me, and you can go ahead and uh, tell me if you've had a similar situation. He said, look, Eddie, it says here, you know, I heard this person, he, he quoted me the verse, and it talked about, I think it was uh, chapter 9, Surah 9, mm. and 29, something like that, mm. about fighting. And I just said, look, do something, a general rule. Read the verse before and after it. Yes. And then he, it was cleared up. He was like, oh, man, that just, just made my heart uh, uh, settle because he was a little scared now. What I get myself into? Have you had this similar situation happen? What advice do you have people also? They'll hear these verses thrown around. Context, context, right? Yes, we see a lot of versions are taken out of context. A lot of verses of the Quran are taken out of context or completely mistranslated or misquoted. And for someone to do that is, is very much an injustice and a disservice to, to truth and a disservice to the book and to the religion itself, even if a Muslim does it. Even if a Muslim takes the Qur'an in context. There are a lot of 
sciences behind understanding what is in that book. We have to understand what is the context. You need to understand the language. You need to understand the basic tenets and teachings of Islam so that you don't misunderstand a verse of the Quran. All of these things go into play. This is why in Islam we refer to the scholars and let them tell us what Islam is, is and what Islam is not. Uh, and, and when we do that, we, we get a clearer painted picture. And this is the thing that they are saying that the scholars are not doing, the imams are not doing, they're not telling people what Islam is about. That's very much untrue. It's the fact that they're not going to those people to find out what is the real information. They're talking to the layman and Joe, you know, whoever, and Terry Berry, and they're letting these people tell the story. Go to the people who know the religion and ask them to tell the story. You'll get a completely different picture. We've had so many, several, several scholars on the show. Also, people like yourself clearly condemning acts like 9-11. We've got to keep going over this shoe bomber, underwear bomber, the envelope bomber, whatever, G-string bomber. These things are contrary to Islam. Islam says don't kill women, don't kill children, don't kill the old people. Islam is about peace, peace with yourself, peace with the creator of the heavens and earth, and peace with the rest of humanity and people are getting to learn all this and more here on the Dean Show. Stay tuned and we will be back after the short break. <laughs>